think the camera's slightly wonky. Yo, 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 it's your boy! Mofo Kenobi! Rise up, gamer nerds. It's time for another mailbag adventure. I've got some stuff off camera from my mailbag, like this, and this, and this, and these. I'm lucky enough to get to make magic content and muck about on the internet for a living, and I can't begin to explain how lucky I feel to be able to do that, and also have people to send me stuff to open. So if you sent me stuff in the past, or you sent me stuff the first time around, I'll shout you out, thank you very much. If you want to send stuff in the future, send it to this PO box address on screen now. This is my PO box. Mailbag adventures, yeah! Before we actually get fully started, I need to let you know there are some things sent to me by companies in this video. There was no paid promotions, I've not been paid to talk about anything I am sent in this video. It's just stuff that people are kind enough to send to me to talk about, to show you, and you can make your value judgment of an arm and you might make some opinions of it as well on camera. No monies, no paid promotions, but there was stuff sent by Wizards of the Coast, for example, and Manaloop have been kind enough to send me another box. So nerds, let's open some mail. In today's mailbag adventure, we're going to be opening things on Thalia's face. So first up, we're going to do some fan mail. We're going to do this piece of mail here, which is from Alexander Stegman. Okay, there's bubble wrap. Mmm, satisfying. I'm gonna get a knife, aren't I? I'll stick you with a pointy end. For those of you at home, don't fuck around with knives. It's a piece from Germany. It's a card. Huh. It's a German. Foil Galactique. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's not just any old foil though, it's an original set file in German. I love me foreign foil cards, especially white legendaries. I have a little note inside saying, Hey Vince, I recently cleared out my basement. I found this German one of my old energy folders. I had it as a child. I don't want to sell it, but can't really make use of it either. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to thank you for the hours of high class entertainment with kind regards from Germany. Oh, Alex. Hopefully we'll meet our GP one day and I can give you a hug because that's awesome. Thank you so much. It's going to go in my folder with all my other sweet, sweet uh, white foil legendary creatures and it'll get played in the sideboard of, of D&T in Modern and perhaps even Maverick as well in Legacy. So thank you. That's fucking awesome. Next up in the fan mail, I didn't say Z then it's not German. Maybe I did. Maybe Alex has inspired me. What is this going to be? I think this is... Oh, this isn't fan mail, kids. This is... A wizard's endorsed product. Hello, this is Rise of the Gatewatch. Now, this is a visual compendium, I believe. Let's have a quick gander. Apparently, it's available for $13.99 in hardcover from different places. Okay. Now, I've started to pick up all the art books and things, and hopefully, wizards will send them to me. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I picked up the DM guide for Ravnica. I picked up the um, Legends and Historic um, art compendium. This one's a bit smaller, it's not as big and things, but. Oh, look at that. That's the uh, Jace Bellowin book art from the book promo that was released. Um, you've got Gideon and Nissa in what looks like some, some initial concept about Jace is in there as well. Of course, Jace will be everywhere. Well, and it just talks you through like, the, 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 the Gatewatch, who they are, some concept art. Huh, early Planeswalker concept art. So you can see like an early Garrick where he looks like bloody Hagrid from, from Harry Potter. That's awesome. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> the more nuanced discussion of Jace is that he's so smart, his plans have plans, but he's slightly less irritating when he's shirtless. <laughs> Jace, the sex symbol. And then it goes through each of the Planeswalkers, like, huh. Chandra showing her cards. Some of the famous art as well. The promo arts for like M14. Anime. And so this is a really, like, I'm not just saying this because Wizards have said it to me. I'm, I'm really into this sort of stuff. I, I love uh, concept art books and like, because this is a basically a cocktail book, right? I would say, it is very high quality and it has got all these amazing sort of focuses on like conceptual art and like um, initial sketches as well as the ending art. It's high quality, it looks good. It's a very good finish, right? The cover is awful. Now, not that the art is awful, but if you want to realistically have that on a coffee table, you want your book to look, I don't know, at least mildly. I don't know, I don't want to use the word grown up, because that's probably not what I'm going for. But this colouring is just garish. It needs to be toned down a little bit and made into a book that doesn't look like a... It looks like a young adult's novel, as opposed to a, a tabletop coffee table art book. It's a very embolus in here, groups are in here, is Garrick in here? 
The chapters are as follows. Chandra, Jace, Liliana, Gideon, Nyssa, Ajani, Teferi, Kea, Nicobar, Surprise the Gatewatch. I get it, I get it. It's the Gatewatch, not the original Lauren 5, but, but that makes me sad that Garrett was left out, you know? I love me some fucking big old hunting Garrett boy. Next! This is from Christopher Miller. I have no idea what's gonna be in here. I have literally no ideas. If you guys have said this like quite early on, by the way, I just haven't got around to doing a mailbag and how bad my chest has been and how ill I've been. I've tried not to be... Okay, that's dust. <laughs> okay, so I thought at first I was like a dust bomb or some some shit. It's not a dust bomb. It's the the padding in the envelope appears to just gone weird. Maybe transit, maybe heat, maybe warmth. Who the fuck knows? However, what was in there is this stuff. Huh? A Magic the Gathering coaster. That's cool. And some beer coasters. Also some craft beers. Naked River Brewing Company. A story brewing company. I don't know what these companies are. Huston Smith. Are these companies I should know. Are these are like American famous like IPAs or something. Drink local beers. This coaster says. But yeah, a magic themed one and a letter. Dear Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I've been watching your videos since the Horse Tribal after M19 came out, and I've enjoyed watching you find all the success that you have. Case in point, Channel 5 will send you back to the US despite the clear national security risk that you are. It's not a security risk to be sexy! I don't get to travel for magic events very much because I'm stuck in the Southeast GPs. Memphis, Atlanta, and other bastions of barbecue and fried chicken. Thus, when you announced that you were attending GP Atlanta, which I didn't actually end up going to, it's kind of... Awkward. I got really excited. I live in Chattanooga, uh, Tien, the city nearest to Atlanta, about a two hour drive, so not very far, and I'm excited to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry, don't hate me! This envelope contains neither glitter nor magic, instead I'm sharing with you my favourite hobby of mine, coasters. I do pick up coasters at breweries and bars and go to attend, and they're nice reminders of good drinks and good travels. Here are some coasters from some of my favourite breweries. Oh, that's really cool. All of which make excellent craft beers, my personal favourite being the Odd Story Station d'Histoire, and one heftier coaster. Hoping to play some pauper, clashing commander, and li live some legacy. Oh, that's a hop. I'm sorry, my friend. I really am. I was originally intending to go to Atlanta because it was a legacy GP, but they've since announced Bologna, and I can't not go to the legacy GP in Europe. So I picked that to my legacy GP of the year, and then picked a few other uh, important GPs in, in America, Seattle, LA, Vegas, etc. I'm sorry we won't get to meet in person yet, but hopefully there's always next year as well, so we'll get out to more GPs and more areas. I want to travel around America as much as I can. This is really cool, thank you so much. I had really fun in Seattle, actually. I know that's not near you necessarily, but Seattle, I went to a place called The Tap House, uh, which is a bar that had over 160 different beers on tap. The manager, Brad, was really hospitable and like, showed me around and taught me about some beers, and I had a lot of fun. What The Tap House and Brad and Seattle taught me is that I think America has better beer than Europe. Now, some people are going to be really <laughs> pissed off at me saying that. But honestly, I think that European beer, you know, your typical like lagers and things, just aren't that exciting. I think the craft beers in America are tastier and more interesting. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite a big fan of actual decent American beer. Not the, you know, the stuff they're drinking always sunny in Philadelphia. But Chris, thank you so much. I'm going to put this in my room. So you might even hear it in videos in the future, you'll hear the, the clink of a cup. And that'll be your coast, my friend. I'm really fucking sorry I didn't come to Atlanta. Don't hate me. Next up, what we got here then, we've got a small parcel. And it's from Melinda Phantom, a regular member of my Discord. So let's have a look at what this is. <laughs> what the? What the fuck is that? So we've got a foil augur bolus in the new sort of anime art from uh, The War of the Spark. And a totally lost. With Fibble Thip stood up top the statue. This is actually one of my wife's favorite magic arts, by the way. She thinks Fibble Thip is hilarious, especially that art. And then we've been sent a Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure Deck Power Code Link and a Yu-Gi-Oh! Structure Deck Soul Powered Link Deck Words Soul Burner. Um, I've never played Yugo in my fucking life. I don't really plan to start. Got two sticks of rock. I like rock. Scrumpy cider. A mojito cocktail. The alcoholic. We've got a letter which we're going to read. We've got... What is this? Is this, is this a turd? Holy shit, it's a turd. But not a real turd, like a, a turd with eyes. And then we've got a postcard and a keyring from Western Super Mare. <laughs> Oh wow, it's a horse drawing a fucking Thomas the Tank Engine carriage. That's pretty funny. Weston is a nice place, honest. 100% no Phyrexian. Since we have the second highest rising tide, it is often just Mad Max. 
half the time. Western Super Mario, I've never actually been. The last thing, as I said, I would send you some modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards on stream some time ago and then I forgot. I got you two decks because having just one is pointless apparently. I also got you random seaside town shit. Do with these whatever you want. Bye for now, Melinda Phantom. P.S. Where did the name Pleasant Kenobi come from? Yeah, I'm sure rock should be hard, but it's very, like... Am I even going off rock? It doesn't taste like cider either. Yeah, I'm not going to continue to eat that. I don't think it's right. Western Super Mare, where the horses pull Thomas the Tank Engine fucking things, apparently. So I was called Pleasant Kenobi on Warcraft 3. Um, the reason I got the name from there was that I was called Pleasant Bullet, which is the name of a song by the band Poison the Well off the album You Come Before You. They're like a post hardcore band. I do recommend the album, I think it's pretty good. And my win rate was getting bad, and what you do when your win rate gets bad and walk off through is you just made a new account because there's no cost, there's no new sign up, you could even use the same email address. So I kept making Smurfs and Smurfs and Smurfs, and the first Smurf account, smaller account, new account that didn't have a bad win rate or had an okay win rate that I stuck with was Pleasant Kenobi. The name came from me going on, oh, called Pleasant Bullet now. Uh, I want to keep a similar name that people can tell it's me. Um, I just replaced Bullet with, and I looked by the room, and there was a copy of Knights of the Old Republic. I was like, oh, I like Star Wars. Uh, Keno Keno Kenobi? And now I've got a Star Wars name for a magic channel. Huh. Hello there. And on our fridge, we've got a lot of magnets of places that I've been. Uh, especially for magic events like Cleveland more recently in Los Angeles and, and a few other things like Sorrento is a place where we went on holiday with my wife. I'm going to put um, Western Superman on there for now. Uh, whether we'll live there forever I don't know uh, because we haven't been there and I might break the rule. My wife not be, might not be too keen on that. But for now Western Superman will live in my fridge with the rest of our cool magnets like these ones. So yeah, thanks for the um, the turd. And the rock that I think went off because I've took a month to do this because I've been ill. My bad. As for these, I might crack one of them on stream when we're having quite an active stream when Melinda's about and uh, we can talk through some of the card choices in there. Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like magic, but shit! But that's not a set I'd appreciate. Thank you for sending me those, Melinda. Um, I will actually have a look, like I said, at them on a stream. Uh, we can talk about the art and some of the card names that we did with the last set that someone sent me. Um, so remind me to do that next time we're on stream and you're, you're in the chat. Lastly, but not least, we've got another Mana Loot Crate. Now, I've opened one of these in a mail bag before. I want to reiterate that I'm not sponsored by Mana Loot. They don't send me money or anything. They're just the fans of the channel. And they've offered to send me stuff. They enjoyed my box opening of it before. I was quite impartial last time. I was like, I've never had a Loot Crate before. Um, so I don't really know what to expect. And I thought it was okay. It was basically just very bang on value for last time I think for what you pay. Um, I guess in some ways it all depends upon what you expect. Ex expectations are an important part of all this jazz, right? Uh, I didn't really have any expectations, but that's because I was getting it for free as well. I'm not going to do massive details about like how you get signed up and stuff. There'll be a link in the description below to Mammal Loot. It's Mammal Loot, the TCG Loot.com crate. Let's have a look at what is in here this time around. Oh, that is a nice deck box. Oh, baby. This is a Nico Bolas. Uh, like screen or window sticker? Official Wizards Company merch, by the way. We've got this bag of air. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, smells like... <coughs> Does it smells weird. We've got a Rihanna Angel of Rebirth. That's the uh, five mana five four. The box um, promo, I believe, from M20. We have some plus one, plus one, and plus two, plus two sort of counters here. Uh, that you can use to put on your creatures. There's minus one, minus one, plus two, plus two, plus one, plus one, and yeah, another plus one, plus one, because that's the most popular one. They're kind of cool. I like those. Some side fit. Are they inner sleeves or the outer sleeves? Inner sleeves, right? We've got a new legendary collection relic token, which I'm going to crack open in a moment. We've got another uh, figurine relic token, the figurine forge from uh, Wizkids. Uh, I did once ask Wizkids if they could send me a load of these to crack on the channel for a video. And they were like, we don't send this stuff out. So I was like, fine, whatever. We got a, a, a D20 spin down, a pretty standard one with the, the normal magic logo on there. I think it might be an NM20, not an NM20. Maybe from one of the intro packs, I guess, is where that's from. If you know where that's from, put it in the comment section below. I'm not 100% sure. Two packs of N20 and a pack of War of the Spark as well. I'm gonna crack those in a moment. Ooh, we've got some sort of cool wood, woodwork life counter thing. Let's get a zoom and a, and a, and a rest chain on that. Zoom and a rest change? This isn't fucking Blade Runner. I talk about This is the one showing promise. This is the security camera at the underwear store. Rotate us 75 degrees around the vertical, please. 
freeze there. Be cool. So you start on 40. It's a bit rough on the edges, but I guess once you get like it eased up, yeah, there you go, 47, 46, 45. Huh. I'm gonna loop like a laser etch curve on the back, bonus horns and sort of a yeah, nickel bonus motif for the front. Uh, that's pretty cool. Some KMC hype mats, if I'm honest, these are the sleeves that I actually like to use. Uh, I use these a lot for my Legacy and my Commander and my uh, Canadian Highlander decks. Um, this is a deck box that actually, uh, when I was with Professors, I was looking at like, deck boxes for an FTDH deck. This was a deck box that, uh, when he showed me some samples of deck boxes that he likes, this is the one that I was like, huh, I like this. So I'm quite a big fan of the Saturn, the Ultra Pro Saturn. Uh, I've already got one for my Commander decks already, I've got another one lined up for my second, and I was going to get a third one for my third, so there you go. That's going to be my third deck box, maybe for Krenko or Perfrost, whichever one ends up leading the charge, as it were. So no, no, it's not bad, is it? Really? So you tell me in the comment section below. I want you guys to go down in the comment section now and say to me, do you think this stuff is worth the price of Mamba? So this is around 32 bucks, 32.95, I think it is. Um, the, 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 the issue I'm seeing here, for example, is that there isn't 100 sleeves. There's, there's 100 inner fits and there's... 80 outer fits, so I couldn't even get this for the month and sleeve up my new EDH deck, for example. So it sort of leaves you there. But as a draft kit, I mean, you're getting boosters. Of course, you're not drafting with these boosters, but you're, you're getting boosters and other bits as well, but you're getting your draft stuff that you might need as well. And a deck box that, this is £10 in the UK. So I don't think this is terrible value, especially if you're getting bespoke and unique stuff. It depends on how much value you hold on, like, interesting trinkets, I guess. But what I would like to know, because again, I'm, I'm relatively impartial. I don't have loot crates. I'm quite lucky enough to get this stuff sent to me for free. But do you feel that if you paid 30 bucks for this, would you feel that was good? I want to know. Tell me in the comment section below. Let's open up some bits and bobs. What have we got in here then? What do we get? Oh, we got a goblin. Ha, huh, that's wicked. I really like these little creature forge things. Like, this is goblin. It's a 1-1 one, one goblin. Look at that cool little dude. The skull on his head, and he's just being a gobbo. He's just gobbling around. What a absolute lad. I'll probably get to play with him in D&D at some point in the future. And then next up we've got these. So these ones have like legendary creatures in them, and they have like, they're like basically life total counters, or like token counters. I got one of these because a fan gave me a Khan one. We've got a Bruno Light of Alabaster. So in many ways this is like redundancy for this wooden piece that we got in the box as well, because this does a, a very similar function. I use a Khan one right now when I'm playing Commander to give myself a life total. And they're very smooth and they're very easy to use as you can see. Obviously you don't use a Compar we own. You wouldn't use this for like a Legacy or a Modern Event or whatever, or MCQ or PTQ or whatever the fuck they call them these days. I mean it's shiny, it's foil, it's got the official art on it and it's very smooth. And there's also an extra dial up here for like Commander attacks or Commander damage. It even goes up to 21 to specifically be Commander damage. Can you see that? Oh, I'm feeling 21 today. That is my age. Then we've got some booster packs. So let's start with Water Spark. Come on. Good on Water Spark. I need some Khan the Great Creators so I can play them in Legacy at Birmingham. I was going to go buy some from vendors. Let's have a look. What do we get? We got Pachow, Ignite the Beacon. That is unfortunate to say the least. And we got a Kaya Ghost Assassin. We've got Ignite the Beacon and a Kaya Ghost Assassin. That is not a good booster. Next up, Corset 2020. Hindsight's 2020. What have we got? Spinning them in my hands. Don't know why. I'm gonna go straight to the back here. We've got this cool looking soldier token. We've got a jungle hollow. We've got a foil mountain. Oh, with some Revnican art. And we've got dread presence. I mean, whilst it's not a full blown like cha ching hit, this card could be gas in decks. I've played it in modern and I've played it in standard so far. There are videos on my channel. You can go check out uh, Jund Scapeshift when I told you all that Scapeshift was good before LSV proved that it was good with Band Scapeshift. And I also played it in the black green value town deck which I think is generally quite good. We just need to wait for Hogat to get fucking banned. Yeah, Dread Process is probably my favourite card in this set. Oh, and there we go. A money, inverted commas, uncommon. Veil of Summer. I've just quickly looked it up, and this is like three bucks, and this is a buck. So this is actually more valuable than Dread Presence because it's seeing modern and legacy play. This card is nuts. If you haven't played with Veil of Summer yet, play it in your Neo Gak sideboards, play it in your Maverick sideboard. This card is so damn good. And our last pack, the last one we're going to open today, actually. We're coming to the end of our mailbag adventure for this time around. A Johnny Sexy Fabio Pride Mate, a Forest, and a Drak Shushesh. Shushesh, Shushesh, more of the, more of the flavor, a bit of a whiff. Uh, card's pretty bloody good and limited, but pretty, pretty bloody good, yes, but not so good here, no. Shock, it's a playable card. 
So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that Loot Crate is worth it? Thank you for Man Loot for sending that out to me. Thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sending out the art booklet as well. Thank you to Melinda, to Alex, to Chris. If you want to send some stuff out to be featured in a mailbag adventure where I just shout and open shit and talk about stuff and be cool, buddy, then send it to the this address. God, I'm awkward today. I'm still coughing a little bit, by the way. If you haven't noticed, my my laughter has been wheezy and stuff. I've had a bit of a chest infection. I'm just about getting over it. And now I'm gonna go flying to Vegas in a week's time and probably get, get even more ill. Thank you for watching. I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Ta-ta for now, motherfuckers.